Welcome back. I want to take a look at the market performance, putting all the economic numbers and everything else aside. We've had a pretty remarkable start to the year. Uh, this shows us the first half performance uh, of the different indices, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, S&P 500, NASDAQ, and Russell. The red line in particular shows us the performance for the NASDAQ the first half of the year, and this calculates you know, from the beginning of the year through Je uh, June 1st. So it's technically not the exact midpoint of the year, but for calculation purposes, this is what we use. <clears throat> the NASDAQ has had the best first half start of the year in a long, long time, about 25% at the moment. Uh, now, the green line represents the S&P 500. That's up about 10%. Uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average and Russell is about flat for the year. And we can see going back in time, this is the best start for the NASDAQ in a very, very long time, even better than what we saw going back uh, to the 1990s when the NASDAQ uh, was very strong. We're going to examine the statistics, what this means, the ramifications for the rest of the year's performance. Now, uh, we see here uh, the x-axis shows us the Dow, S&P, NASDAQ, and Russell. Again, the Dow, is the Dow Jones Industrial Average are the 30 largest stocks, such as Boeing, uh, Home Depot, McDonald's, that represent the U.S. economy. The S&P 500 is, uh, consists of 500 stocks, which gives us a more broad-based look at the economy. The NASDAQ is heavily weighted by technology. Russell 2000 are small-cap stocks. Uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, uh, the blue histogram bar shows us the first half performance, January 4th, uh, 1st through June 1st. The red histogram bar shows us the second half performance from June 1st uh, through the end of the year. Now, of course, we have more time calculated from June 1st through the end of the year. That's why I think in part uh, the red histogram bars are always higher than the blue one. Uh, and the yellow represents the average performance. These are averages over the course of you know many decades. Uh, and we can see historically the first half of the year underperforms the second half of the year. Uh, and you add those two together, obviously we have the end of the year. The NASDAQ shows us the best returns over time, followed pretty evenly by the S&P 500 uh, Russell 2000 and S&P. Now the NASDAQ is heavily weighted by technology. When these technology stocks go up, they tend to go up a lot. Uh, this is the annual performance based on the first half of the year. So based on what the market has done so far, what can we expect for the rest of the year? Well, the x-axis shows us, so for example, if the, if the NASDAQ, which is the red line, is up 10% for the year so far, the first half of the year, then we can see historically it actually goes up 50% over the entire course of the year. This reflects a lot of the gains that we saw, for example, in the 1990s with the technology stocks moving higher. Currently, the NASDAQ is up 25%, which is really kind of off the charts from what we see average-wise. Uh, but we tend to see that the best performances for the entire year are led by very strong first half performances. Conversely, when the market starts out negative, we tend to see negative years. Now we consider uh, the spread between the different indices. So if we take the strongest market, which is the NASDAQ, and subtract away the weakest market, which maybe would be the Russell at this point, what is the spread? What's the divergence? Now, we take a look at that. That's in red. <clears throat> and we compare that to the average <clears throat> average annual performance. Now, this is the absolute value, which means it shows all numbers and positive values. This gives us an equal comparison. So, for example, if the market's up 5%, it'll show us as a positive 5. If it's down 5%, negative 5%, It'll also be reflected as a positive five. The reason why we do it this way is because we want to show just in terms of the velocity, how much of a spread, how much does the, uh, the divergence in the market, how much of a correlation does that translate it to in terms of 
the end of the year performance. And what we see overall is that during those periods of time that we have a larger spread. Now, there's not a strong, strong correlation. There's a moderate correlation. But generally speaking, that we tend to see the best or worst performances when there's a largest divergence. In other words, that when we see that all the indices tend to agree, that's when we tend to see moderate performances. But when we see one market, the NASDAQ, for example, which is on fire and it's much, much outperforming the Russell 2000, the Dow, which is kind of flat for the year, that translates into more volatile markets. More volatile markets. Now, volatility is not direction. Volatility just is to the degree that the markets will move up and down. We tend to see the most volatile markets when there's a biggest spread in between markets. So far this year, again, we see a very volatile market where the NASDAQ is up 25%, but the Dow and the Russell are basically flat for the year. So this tells us that we could very well expect very volatile markets. Now, will that market be up or down? That's left to be seen. But this does tell us a probability for very volatile markets. Conversely, you take a look at 2005, those are very small spread. Uh, 2004, those are very small spread. And that led to very, you know, inferior overall market returns uh, shown in blue. Conversely, when we see very high spreads like 2001, 2002, 2003, more recently, 2019, even through last year, then we tend to see uh, more volatile markets with more volatile spreads. Uh, and finally, we see here, this is overall the end of the year end performance for the different markets, the Dow, NASDAQ, S&P, and Russell, going back to 1995. And you know, we could, we could discern several different patterns out of this. One thing though, is that there tends to be a seven year cycle in terms of downturns, we saw a downturn in the year 2000, 2001. You know, you add seven years of that, we see very bad markets in 2008. You add seven years of that, it brings us to 2015, where we saw, you know, moderate down markets. Uh, the the Russell closed down. The you know the Dow was really underperforming for the year. The Nasdaq was underperforming for the year. Overall, 2015 was not really a great year. Well, you add seven years of that, and that was 2022. That was a very bleak year last year as well. Now, does 2022 carry over to 23? Well, the year 2000 carried over 21 and uh, 2001, even 2002. So it's not set in stone this rule. But there tends to be a seven-year cycle for you know quite inferior returns. 22 last year uh, certainly, arguably, would be classified as such. Uh, maybe that'll carry over to 23 this year as well. It'll be left to be seen. But we thought these statistics were pretty interesting to talk about. We hope this has been helpful. We look forward to seeing you back soon.